Praise the Lord, and thank you for tuning in to another time of Kingdom Empowerment Ministries. I'm Pastor John Thomason, and I'm just so excited that you are watching on today. I have my, I have my guest, my friend, Elder David Nichols. He's hanging with us again this week, and we are so excited what God is doing. Ain't that right, Elder? Amen. God is doing some great things. Amen. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Listen, I don't think it's by chance that you tuned in. I believe that God set this up so that you could be watching at this time because the Lord has a word for you on today. Hallelujah. Well, you know how we do here on Kingdom Empowerment Ministries. We get right into it. Hallelujah. So go ahead, so go ahead and grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles and go with me to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, verse 25 through 34. And I know you're probably going around still getting your Bible. So while, while you're getting your Bible or turning your, turning your scriptures there, we're going to go ahead and pray. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you for this time uh, of, of, of empowerment. Lord, we ask that you will begin to move by your spirit even right now, Father God. As the gospel is being preached, Father God, to the hearer, Lord, Lord, bring peace, bring yes. deliverance, work miracles in the name of Jesus, and bring breakthrough in the lives of the hearer on today. Yes. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for what you're doing right now. Lord, I thank you that your presence is with them, Father God, whether, whether they're watching online, whether they're in their living room, in their, in, their, in their bedroom, in the hospital, wherever they are, your presence, your glory is with them right now father god and i thank you father god that is nothing that the devil can do that father god that right now this time that we have with you is sacred and you're going to speak and we thank you for it right now father god in jesus name amen amen amen, amen. mark chapter 5 verses 20 beginning with verse 25 it says and a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. Mm. When she had heard of Jesus and came in the press behind and touched his garment, for she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, and he turned, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude th thronging you, and saying, who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And said, and said unto her, daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, when I, when, I, when I think about this woman, she had an issue of blood, so she was considered unclean. Mm -hmm. So for her to, 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 touch, to touch Jesus, being a holy man, you know, that was serious. But she was willing to do what she had to do to get what she needed. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says that she had spent all that, that she had, and then she grew worse. <laughs> And if you don't, if you can't get better in a, if a, if a situation don't make you better, it will make you bitter. Yes, it will. And so will. she, she, she was tired of being bitter because she had spent all her money. She had all these physicians, all these doctors. And you know, uh, some of us have been through that and, and spent all the money she had 
and grew, she didn't get better. She, she grew worse. Yes. And so the Bible says that she heard yes. about Jesus. Come on, come on. She come heard on. about Jesus. Yes. And she was willing to take the risk. Come on. Is Jesus worth taking the risk? Is Jesus worth taking the risk? And I, I believe he is yes, he because is. she made a decision that, you know, I'm going to take a risk. I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to go touch the hem of his garment. And the Bible says she got in the press. She, in other words, and in order to touch the hem of his garment, she had to go low. Come you on. know, she didn't just walk right up to him. She had to press her way yes, through did. that crowd. And understand, you know, she wasn't healed then. She, she was still sick. But as she pressed her way, the closer she got, you know, the Lord healed her. And uh, I'm just reminded uh, a couple years ago, uh, I had some problems with my throat and I would lose my voice and I couldn't sing. I couldn't speak. And for about three or four days, man, I would be out of commission. I couldn't say nothing. And so I went to the doctor and they, they, they sent me to a speech therapy. And, um, and, and then the doctor said, uh, he, he did a test and he says, I got some nodules mm -hmm. on my vocal cords. And because I had been straining my, my voice, uh, the muscles that operate the vocal cords were, were, had, had grown to an immense size and they hadn't gotten big. And he was concerned that, that you know, something could happen with, the, with that. So I had to go in for surgery. And uh, I'm telling you, uh, God was with me because I said, you know, Lord, I'm a worshiper. Right. Uh, you know, I, I am. I'm a worshiper. And I said, what would happen if I lost my voice? But, you know, even through that, I still I was at church on Sunday doing praise and worship. After I'd done praise and worship, I couldn't talk. But God was with me, and I, it didn't shut me down. I said, Lord, you know, I'm a worshiper. And so after my uh, uh, doctor says, hey, we got to cut those off. And when he did, he went in and cut them. He said they, they were bigger than he thought. And actually, he thought they were cancer. But they wasn't. God, God just blessed me. And my voice is stronger now than it's ever been in my life. But it was because of God's healing power. Yes. It was because of God's healing power and me trusting that. Thank God I had a good surgeon. Uh, God touched the surgeon's hand. I had a good surgeon. But, but, but God, you know, brought my voice back. And I remember the pastor asking me, uh, Brother Dave, I hadn't sang in about three months. And he said, can you sing? I said, uh, yeah, I think I can. <laughs> And I got up and said, uh, praise is what I do when I want to get close to you. And I can remember going through that situation and having to keep, having to, you know, I couldn't say nothing for two weeks. Yeah. And having to go, man, that is hard, especially when you're a worshiper. I, I still praise God. I, I didn't let anybody hear me, but <laughs> off key, brother, I was, I was still praising God. Mm -hmm. I was praising God for what he had done. And my voice came back stronger. Than, than ever before, and uh, I just thank God, amen. God, is, God has just been so gracious to me. Yes. Yeah, I, I understood when he told Paul, thy grace is sufficient. sufficient. You know, he wasn't telling Paul, deal with it. Right. He was telling Paul, my grace, what I've done on the cross, what I've done on Calvary is, is more than enough to take care of what, whatever's ailing you, man. Oh, and, and just just thinking of you know just what you said and even with the woman with the issue of blood she pressed her way yes. you know she kept you know she she was willing to take the risk in other words she was willing to stretch her faith you know and touch him to, to do what had never been done you know she she heard Jesus was coming through in other words she heard the gospel but she was already pre-prepared meaning by she had already heard about him. And when she heard that he was coming through, she would say, listen, I'm going to take the risk. I done spent everything I done got. I'm, I'm pretty much technically broke, and I got this issue. I, I, I got this, 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 this flow of blood that's constantly flowing, and I needed to stop. Right. And the only way that it's going to stop is if, if I can just touch him. And, it, you know, and she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know. I'll be made whole. So her faith was already there. She, her, the, the, her expectation was already there. All she wanted to do was just touch him. Come on, he didn't have to say nothing to her. No. He had to lay hands. No. Was, there was no theatrics that was needed. No. 
She just wanted to touch his clothes, and she was good. Her faith was tied in. He said, if I could just touch him while he's moving, I'll be made whole. Because, listen, uh, listen, if you want to be healed, if you want to experience the power of God, you have to be willing to touch him. Yes. Well, well, Pastor, how can I touch him? I don't see him. You touch him with your faith. That's right. Your faith is what causes you to come in contact with the invisible. And in and, and, and Hebrews um, chapter 11 says, Now faith is yes. the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of the unseen. Yes. So with her faith, she touched him. And when she touched him, power, virtue came out of his body. Yes. And she was made whole. Hallelujah. She, she was made whole right then. She was healed because she was willing to take a risk. She was willing to take a risk and, and, and press her way. Yes. Not just, you know, sometimes we want to be made whole, but we don't want to do nothing. Say we that. want to just stay there and, and let God, well, God, here I am, you know. Uh, are you willing to take a risk? Are you willing to press your way? Are you willing to come out of your, where you at, your position? Your, your comfortable position and get uncomfortable yes. for, for Jesus. You want to touch him that bad? That woman had to get uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. First of all, she was unclean. Yes. So that was, an un, un, that was an uncomfortable situation. Then she had to go into the crowd. Could you, could you imagine, uh, you know, us, us taking, uh, people taking a risk like that? Most people say, well, uh, call Jesus, have him come to my house. <laughs> you know, come and see me. Call Jesus, have him come and see me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be right here. No, sometimes you have to get out of your uncomfortable yes. position and go and, and impress your way to touch him. It's not always going to be easy. Right, and just like you said, she got low. She and got when she low. got low, that, 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 that ground wasn't paved. No, and, you, and people probably stepping all over and stepping on her. I, she was in the press. Yes. See, we don't, we, people nowadays don't want to get into the press. They don't want to press for their healing. They don't want to press for their deliverance. They, 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 they always want God to do something for them, and they don't do anything. I'm not saying, but faith is a fact, but faith is an act. Yes, it is. You know, and Say it, that and faith, again. Faith, will allow, you, faith is a fact, but faith is an act. And faith will allow you to do. It will give you the power to do. And, 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 and to get, get to working, you know, sometimes we, we think faith is something, oh, I just going to believe God going to, go, you know, uh, when, I, when I got hired at the company I worked for, um, I actually thought, now this is how, now this was crazy faith, but I thought they was going to come and knock on my door and say, Mr. Nichols, we got a job for you. Well, that wasn't going to happen. I had to go put in my application. Come on. They ain't going to come and knock on your door and you don't get up and go put in an application. I had to go put in an application. They didn't come and knock on my door, even though I had faith to believe that they was going to come and knock on my door. They did, never did. I had to go and put my application in. And then God did the work. Yes. yes. Then, my, then God did the work. But you, sometimes we think God is going to, just like a big Santa Claus, going to just pour it down up on us and we, not, and we just not do anything. But sometimes we got to get up out of our comfortable positions. Yes. And we got we got to get uncomfortable, and we got to be willing to take a risk. You know, I tried everything else, but try Jesus. Right. And how how bad do you want him? So you you have to you have to be willing to do your part. Yes. She was willing to do her part. Yeah. See, it's like even even with the when 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 God was dealing with Joshua and the children of Israel, God told him, He said, "Listen, I will go before you, but you still have to possess sure. it." Sure. So. You still, so if, if you, for, for instance, as an example, if you, if you are believing God for your healing, but the doctor tells you to eat right, you eat right. That's right. You do, you do what's required, and then God will do the rest. That's right. See, that's also what you call partnering with God. You do your part, and then God does his. And then, and, then, and then when you do your part and God does his, and then together, whatever you believe in, believe in for, it manifests or it comes to pass. Right. But she, 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 she was determined to touch them, and she pressed her way in. And because she pressed her way in, she got what she was looking for. That's right. Come on, if you, if, 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 
I, if, if you're willing to press, if you're willing to stretch for it, come on, you can have it. No matter what it is, you know, it's just like like he was eat, like like Elder, Elder was saying about a job. If you talk about you know I'm believing God for a job, the Lord bless me for a job. Come on, you the, you and sow seeds. Lord gonna bless me with a job, but you ain't fill out no applications. You're not gonna get no job. You've got the you there you you have to go out and go get it. You have to go out and fill out those applications. Come on, if you if you believe in God for a healing in your body, you got you got to believe it. Lord, I believe your word. Whose report you going to believe? Well, well, pastor, they said that I got this sickness. They said that I got I got that sickness and, and I got this going on with my body. Listen, he's a healer. And you have to be, you have to be willing to release your faith. When you release your faith, and you, and you receive the finished work of the cross, then start doing what you couldn't do by faith, and right. you'll see that God has touched That's you. That's right. Uh, 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 it must have been about a couple months ago, the doctor said I was board, borderline diabetes. And, uh, <laughs> and so he says, I'm going to send you to a, 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 um, a counselor, and uh, you know we're going to try to do it by diet. And so I was like, here we go, you know. I said, uh, Lord, you know I don't need this. And, and I started praying to God. So I went, I went to see the, uh, the, the, the counselor, and, and she started telling me, you know, you got you to gotta eat this, you got to do this, you got to watch your diet, and this is what you got to do, and you got to eat so much of this. And, and I was like, mm. And the Holy Spirit said, David, now didn't you ask me to help you with this diabetes? I said, now nah, I've sent somebody here to tell you about how you're supposed to eat and stuff. And he said, now you focus. So, I, so she must have thought something was wrong with me. So I, I focused and I started looking right in her eye. And she was like, okay, you know. But the Holy Spirit said, you, you, didn't, you, didn't you say you wanted to be healed of this? He said, I'm, I'm giving you some, some, some knowledge. I'm yes. giving you some information that you need that would, that would, that so, you, uh, so you won't uh, fall into that category of diabetes. He said, now you, you're going to have to do the right thing. It's going to be a, this is going to have to be a life changing experience for you. And I said, so uh, when you go to your counselor, you do, you do what you're supposed to do. And I said, well, you know, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, so God was saying, I'm going to heal you, but you need to listen. I'm trying to give you some information. Yes. I'm trying to give you something. Sometimes we don't want to listen. If we don't got, come from God directly. Sometimes right. God sends people, people in our lives yes. to give us some information that's going to help us get out of debt. You know, uh, help us in our walk with God. Sometimes, you know, uh, I thank God. Sometimes He uses my daughter to, to speak to me. I, I remember there was a time where I was in a in a stupor, and she called me. She said, "Dad, Dad, remember when you told me to trust God?" She said, "You need to start trusting God, Dad." And I was, <laughs> I said, "You right, daughter." <laughs> and so, so I mean, God used my daughter to speak to me, you know, and sometimes God will use people to speak to you, yes. you know, and, and, and put you in a situation where wake you up and, and kind of get you back in the press. Yes. You yes. know, sometimes we don't want to press, but it will get you back into the press. And see, you know, that, that's what I love about God, because he, he'll use, God will use people, he'll, um, he'll speak to you in a dream, mm -hmm. he'll uh, um, speak to you directly, but the very time when you start getting weary is, is the very time when you're right at the brink of your miracle. Mm -hmm. So what he does is he, he may send somebody or speak to you in a dream or whatever, whatever way that he speaks, that, he, the, the, that, that the Lord decides to speak to you to get your attention, to give you that extra boost so that you can focus, so that you can receive what he has for you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. See, so but you have to be willing to do what you got to do to get what you need from God. That's right. Listen, can I tell you that he's done all the heavy lifting for us when he, when he took care of business for us on the cross? That's right. your, your healing, your deliverance, your breakthrough is already taken care of. Listen, when Jesus said it is finished. And because he said it is finished, it is literally it's finished. All you have to do is just receive it. So when I when I think about this woman, she was already, even though Jesus hadn't died on the cross, 
She looked, she, she approached him like it's already done. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's how you got, that's how you got to look at it, Lord. I, even though I'm battling my body, but I'm healed and it's already done. And then act like it's already done. See, because once, once she received that healing, once she got it, she realized, she said, wait a minute, something's different. <laughs> the, the, the flow of blood isn't moving like it used to. I, I've, I've been healed. And she, to, and she wanted to try and be quiet. She wanted to try and be quiet about it. Jesus turned around and talked about, who touched me? Now, when I think about the disciples, I can kind of understand them, too, because it was a whole bunch of people that was pushing and pulling on Jesus right. while, he was, while he was walking, and only one woman when touched him. Now, that all, now, what that also speaks to me is a pres the presence of the Lord could come in a place, and he could be in there and be in there strong, spirit of God moving, and you could fool around and not touch him. Our faith makes a demand on That's him, it. and it, that woman had a demand. Yes. Uh, and, and the Bible says, too, to hear that when she heard, had heard of Jesus, so somebody told her. somebody told her about Jesus. Yes. Somebody told her about Jesus. She said when she had heard of Jesus, the Bible says uh, she came in the press. Yes. She got busy when she heard of Jesus. And she, the Bible says she came in the press. Yes. And then, and so, so somebody, somebody told her about Jesus. And she believed, in, she believed it enough to get in the press. Yes. To take a risk, to take a chance, and get uncomfortable, Come and on. go low, Come and on. touch the hem of his garment. And so many times we don't want to get down and get dirty. We want everything to happen all pretty. Right. You know, we want we want we want we want pretty healing, and we want pretty salvation. We want. <laughs> Sometimes it don't happen. It don't happen mm -hmm. like that. Sometimes God, you 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 can be at the lowest ebb of your life, and God will. God, that's when God. That's when I got saved. I mean, I you know I, I spent a lot of time on the altar, crying out to the Lord, mm -hmm. but <laughs> it was, it was one of the lowest points of my life, and 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 I had I had I was fed up. Yes. And I had, and I, and I was ready to, I was ready to give up, and and I was get ready to, I was, I, I was, I said, I'm out of here, you know, but God, in His mercy, in His grace, man, came and and showed me love, and that's how, you know, uh, I heard, you know, sometimes you hear of Jesus, but you know, don't have enough faith to to really touch Him. Right, right, and right. I didn't have, and that 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 night, uh, I touched Him. And he touched me back, you know, and uh, I praise God for that. I've been going strong ever since. Yes. But, but sometimes we got, we got to touch him. We got to be willing to touch him and get uncomfortable. You know, I wasn't on the altar. When God, when God touched me, I wasn't on the altar. I had, went back to my seat. And uh, that's, where God, that's where God did it at. And he did it. That's where he did it at. That's where I gave up and let God. You know, that's where I, I surrendered all to him. Yes. Amen. And see, you know, that's that's what it takes, man. You 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 have to be willing to surrender all to him. Yep. You know, no matter what you're going through, you know, give it to him, surrender it all to him and trust him and go after him. Mm -hmm. You gotta be willing to go after him, you know, if, in order to touch him. Hallelujah. She went after him, and when she went after him, she got her miracle. See, one thing I want you to understand, miracles are instantaneous, but healings are a process. Now, well, you say, well, I, 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 Pastor, I've been believing for my healing for the longest. Well, he finished it for you at the cross already. Yeah. So since he finished it for you at the cross, well, Pastor, I haven't, I, haven't, um, gotten the, I haven't gotten healed yet. No, you already healed. It's just time is trying to catch up to what God has already done. But what you have to do is you have to keep declaring, I'm healed. That's right. Keep declaring I'm healed. See, before she got to, got to Jesus, she said, if, if, I, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. She, so, so while she was pressing and being stepped on and, you know, not really being noticed, because if they would have really noticed her, they would have stoned her. Because sure. she was considered unclean. So while she... 
while she got low, while she's crawling on, on those stones, come on, everything wasn't paved, it wasn't blacktop. Come on, there was some rocks. So she, she had to deal with the little pebbles in her legs, so there was some pain, but she pressed her way because if, she was, all she wanted to do was just touch him, mm -hmm. reach out. She, all she wanted to do was just stretch enough where she could touch, get close to him enough while he was moving. He wasn't standing still, he was moving. Yeah. So she had to try to catch up to him just to touch him, but because she was determined to get to him, she got her miracle. Mm -hmm. When she stretched out in faith, she touched him with her faith, and whatever, and, and the and the and the killing that she needed, the miracle that she needed, she pulled it out of him with her faith, and she was made whole at that moment. Can I tell you that that can happen for you right now? Yes. That God can touch you right now. Is your faith stirred up? Is your faith stirred up right now? Come on, stretch your hands towards me right now. God is going to touch your body right now. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I speak to every sick body. I speak to every everybody that's, that's dealing with sickness. I speak to that pain in your body. I command it to go now in the name of Jesus. I command that sickness to leave your body now in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command your body to be healed now in the name of Jesus. Yes, now just begin to do what you couldn't do right now. Stretch your faith. Begin to exercise. See, you, you, you have faith, but faith is also an action. Take action. Begin to do what you couldn't do by faith right now in the name of Jesus. God is touching you. Yes, sir. As you touch him, he's touching you. Hallelujah. Power is going into your body and, and healing you where you need healing in your body now. In the name of Jesus. And Father God, I thank you for doing it now. Yes, God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. You know, Pastor, I'm sure there was, Elder, I'm sure there was some that were watching that don't know the Lord. Can you lead them to the Lord? You know, if you just uh, repeat after me, Lord, uh, I'm a sinner and I receive you as Savior. Yes. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin and rose again and you're sitting at the right hand of the Father, pleading my case now yes. in the name of Jesus. I receive you now as Lord and Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, heaven is rejoicing, and we're excited that you're in the kingdom with us. Hallelujah. Listen, we want, I want you to come join us here at Kingdom Empowerment Ministries here in Port Huron. We're in Port Huron. Listen, some of you have been watching and broadcast, and I'm just so excited that you've been watching. But I want you to come join us here in Port Huron at our Kingdom Empowerment Ministries here. Our address is 2700 Pine Grove Avenue. Come join us. Our services on Sundays are at 12 noon, and then we have our midweek service, which is our recharge service at 7 o'clock. Listen, I love you, and keep releasing your faith and touching Jesus all through the week. And I see you next time for your kingdom empowerment. God bless.